Rainier Valley Historical Society's mission is to collect, preserve, exhibit, and interpret the history and heritage of Rainier Valley and its people, and to promote public involvement in and appreciation of its history and culture. Our geographic boundaries are from Dearborn Street to the city limits and from I-5 to Lake Washington. Our office is located at 3710 South Ferdinand Street in the Columbia City neighborhood of Seattle. Okay, um, so you were telling me about your grandmother, and, or tell me some more, tell me some more about your grandmother's kitchen, what you remember about that. Other thing about grandmother's kitchen was it was back in soap country, you know, like there's pigs and chickens and cows and everything in the backyard, just as many puppies as well. And um, everything was fresh, you know. I mean, she did have a, a shed out back where she's had smoked meat, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, But when it was time to eat fried chicken, my grandfather would go out back and kill the chickens alive, which was kind of hard on us kids. Because we were so used to going out there feeding the chickens and becoming friends with them. And then the next thing you know, we're eating them. <laughs> and my granddad, you know, of course, he, he really didn't care about stuff like that. But we did, you know, so they'd have to trick us. To say that it was out of the grocery store because we were not going to be eating Fred and Wilma out back because you know kids you name your pets right and the little piggies and it was all it was nasty back there and there were only uh, planks there was an outhouse this mm -hmm. is how you know back back then and there was a, a planks where you had to walk out and um, I just remember grandmother saying to him many times uh, Marty Squad. Give me a couple of chickens, you know, and we would run and hide because we would know we'd hear the chickens. They would be running because we knew Granddaddy was going to get them. You know? So you knew. Oh, yeah. You just had that feeling that, oh. And then, you know, they have to boil them and pluck and, you know. But then when it was time to sit down and eat that food, you didn't think about it then because it smells. Grandma's house always smelled good. You know, there was always food. There was always somebody bringing something by, and, you know. It's, kind of like a neighbor thing, you know, whatever you were good at, somebody would bring, sometimes peaches, somebody would bring pumpkins, somebody would bring, you know, it was kind of a trade-off thing. Wow. Yeah, so it was, um, she was, a, she was just a fantastic person. She made, we, she made her own soap, uh, body soap, they called it lye soap back then, so she, you know, there were all these different smells, you know, and you, when you were little, you just sat and watched and, you know, what is she making now? What is she doing now? You know, it was... So did you spend a lot of time at the house when you were little? Well, when, when my dad would go overseas, before we moved to Tacoma, we would go back to grandmother's house every, every time, uh -huh. you know, or when he would get stationed somewhere else. Um, that we could not go, we'd always go back to grandma's. But mm -hmm. grandma's house was so little, and uh, my, us five, and then my mother's sister also lived there. She mm -hmm. had three. Oh, wow. And we're talking about, I mean, to us, it seemed like a big place, but when we went back for the funeral, it was like, wow. Lord Jesus. <laughs> How did all of us fit in this, you know, this little, little tiny place? And, uh, you know, they didn't use banks, you know, they put their money in jars and, you know, put it onto the floorboards and, you know, it was just a totally different life to go from Mississippi and then go back to our army post where everything was upgraded and you didn't have to go to the outhouse. And, you know, it was real different, you know, I mean, the roads were dirt, you know, back then and uh, it's just a whole new life, a whole different life altogether, you know, you didn't have a lot of toys or games or, you know, you had, you made up your own stuff, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, we run up and down the street, you know. That was fun to us. And uh, lots of kids, a lot of kids around. But mostly I remember for my myself, I stayed wherever the cooking was going on most of the time, mm -hmm. you know, because it was always fascinating. Who are you? Baby. Oh. <laughs> So, um, so that it sounds like your mom kind of recreated a lot of that in her. Yeah, um, out of all of the girls, and there were three girls, and 
four boys <coughs> on my mom's side. My mom was the one who picked it up. Mm-hmm. Not that my aunties couldn't cook, but not like her. She was like mom, like her mother, like grandmother. Um, everything came natural. And it was fun, like it is for me. You know, Vivi will say uh, she thinks I'm like my most happiest when I'm in that kitchen. Mm-hmm. Or I can go to sleep at night and dream about a recipe, and then I get up and come downstairs to start cooking before I forget because I don't write things down because I don't want anyone to get it right. And she'll come out of her room and say, what are you doing? I, said, I, dre- I dreamt about this. I got to cook it right now. You know? But I'm known for doing that all the time you know, because it's, you know, when you feel it, you say, oh, this will be perfect. You know, I made a cheesecake. Um, must have been about three weeks ago. And um, Vivian's uh, son, Sheridan, we were talking about cheesecakes, and I said, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about one with the crust with fresh apples, you know, cooked in, cooked apples, cooked in with it, you know, and some caramel, you know, and then uh, the cheesecake on top of the graham cracker crust with the apples mixed in the, in the crust, right? And then chocolate cake on top. And so he said, are you going to make it? Are you going to make it? And I said, yeah, I'm going to make it. And I, and I made it, and uh, then I called. He said, call me right away. <laughs> and I called them so they could come and get it. But it turned out great. Wow. But it was something that I dreamt about. Wow. So, you, so do you feel like your, your things that you make up have influences from, from your mom? Or oh, yeah. Because my mom used to, you know, I, I imagine there were times when we were little where there wasn't a lot of food, but we didn't know that. Mm. You know, but she could make. You know, she could come up with something, and you would, boy, you swear you were at the White House. <laughs> you didn't, we didn't know. We were too little to know right, right. when hard times were hard times, you know, but we never felt like they were. You know, she was just a very creative person. She was very, and she still is today. You know, she still, um, I call her on the phone and say, Mother, I, I can't remember. How do you do da 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 da? And she said, Okay, you have a pencil? You know, she just got this real sweet voice. And she runs me back. So she says, I said, oh, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. But, you know, we still have that relationship where I can call her whenever, you know, something slips my mother, what you, how did you make the water bread, you know, and when they used to. And that was one of those, when you couldn't afford the uh, cornmeal, and they came up with some other recipe, and you would fry it in the oil. And it was like little pancakes, but it was like bread. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was really a trip, you know. It's called water bread? Yeah, we thought it was, but we didn't know it was, okay, we're running out of money until payday. <laughs> we didn't know if that was what it, it was it was for, but huh. a lot of stuff like that, you know. Yeah. It, it, you know, they learned to use what they had mm-hmm. at the time, you know, and uh, we ate, we were little pigs. <laughs> we, we ate good, and we had no idea what was going on most of the time. So, uh-huh. Yeah, but... Uh, when, when you were cooking for your, you have two boys, is that mm-hmm. two boys? So was that, you said you used to run them out of the kitchen? No, but my oldest boy likes to cook, you know, and my youngest boy has uh, cerebral palsy, so he doesn't cook very much, but he likes being in the kitchen. Oh, okay. So when they come home, um, and I'm in the kitchen, they're in the kitchen, uh-huh. you know, I don't kick them out too much. I just tell them, don't touch anything, <laughs> you know, go wash your hands. I mean, boys are boys. You know, you just, you know. But like my oldest boy, he loves to be in the kitchen. He likes to cook. Okay. So I think he got it from me. You know, he, uh, he'll call and say, Mom, I'm trying to fix da 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 da. And I said, Then what do you need to know? And he'll go, Well, I think I know it. And I said, Well, then, why are you calling me again? I always, you know, try to challenge his head. Why are you calling me again? He said, Well, I just want to check the plate. The, the flavors out, and I said, okay, go ahead, go ahead. I said, see, son, you knew, you knew. Just remember, close your eyes and remember, you know, which is what my mom said. Did you close your eyes? <laughs> Do you remember what I taught you? you know? <laughs> I, and I find myself doing the same thing with him. But he loves to cook. You know, he's about 300 pounds. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not, but he's, yeah, a, he's a big boy. No, that's what he's boy. Yeah, no. No, he's a, uh, he cooks, yeah, he cooks, you know, he's just it's something that he does naturally and he loves to do it, and so I always tell him, and I tell both the boys, if you got to work, do something you love to do, because you got to do it, 
you got to get up every day and go. You know, so you might as well love what you're doing, you know. And if you love cooking, then be the best at what you're doing, you know. And then get up, go out there and make that money, which is what we do. You know, we get, we love kids, love to sing, and love to cook. So that's what we do. Yeah, yeah, you know. Well, we're blessed that way. We, we've even not known each other for so long that we don't even have to talk. We just look at each other and kind of know. Or something to be saying, we'll go. Yeah. <laughs> because we know what the other person is thinking, you know. Uh -huh. So it works out fine, you know. Uh, um, usually when we're not working, I'm usually upstairs in my studio because I had the studio built up in the attic, uh -huh. so which is very cool. It looks like a wood cabin wow. up there, you uh -huh. know. So it's just totally separate from all this white uh -huh. down here, you know. And I got my big screen and every my life is up in that room, <laughs> you know. So we don't even end up. Uh, Believe it or not, we have walkie talkies. No, oh, okay. oh, okay. so it's from when, for when you're up there. No, you know, hey, hey girl. You know. <laughs> and people always laugh before I got my uh, cell phone, I was uh, carrying my walkie talkie. No, I'm, I'm tripping. <laughs> and they would, uh, the, the, my friends would tease me, girl, what is that? This is my walkie talkie. <laughs> what you do? Why don't you just get a cell phone? There's no bill involved with this walkie talkie, it's batteries. It works. From here to Safeway, I can get her on the... That is crazy. <laughs> well, hard, it, it works, you know. But I, they finally, she finally broke down and bought me one. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody worked at the company. So. Yeah. So, um, do you, um, were, there, were there traditions in your family that you grew up with that you um, did with your kids when you had kids? Just um, holidays were important. You know, and it was always big meals, you know, Easter and Christmas and, you know, Thanksgiving. Um, there are always certain things that you cook. There was always a ham. There was always a turkey. There was always a pot roast, you know. And there was always mashed potatoes. There were certain foods that you always had on the table, you know. And it was always too much. But better too much, yeah, better too much than too little. And um, always take something to somebody who may not have as much as you, you know, so whoever was in the neighborhood or whatever, we would take something over to them to help them out. That was always a tradition in our house, you know, yeah. And, um, whenever you fix something, which is my mom taught me, um, always fix too much because there's always somebody who can't afford a cake or, which I do now, you know, when I'm making things, I always make more than one in case something happens. You know, because you got to cover yourself. And if everything turns out great, then I pick someone different to take that too. And say, well, here, you know, you take this and, you know, and it, it's, a, it's a nice way to let people know that you care about it. You know, because a lot of people don't have anybody. You know, a lot of the elderly people, they don't have nobody that, that comes over and says, can I go to the grocery store for you or can I do something for you? And that's, I just was raised that way. So I do it all the time. We used to have little Irene. She's been she's been dead now for about three years, and um, she was ninety four. Her Vivian's grandmother and her were the same age, and uh, I would go grocery shopping for her and cook for her and you know do things for her. And um, when Irene passed away, Aaron was born. And Aaron, little Aaron had those blue eyes, and Irene had those blue eyes, and that was so spooky. <laughs> well, it really was because her eyes were so, are so is so much like her, yeah. and her her attitude and everything is like Irene. And I said, Vivi, this is reincarnation, yeah. you know. And even now, uh, you look at it, and we call her little Irene, mm -hmm. you know, between each other, because mm -hmm. you never know yeah. things like that happen, you know. But um, she always taught us to give back. You know, even if you don't think you have a lot in life, you sometimes you have way more than somebody else does. So always learn to give back. And, you know, she always made us define what rich was. You know, rich to somebody else may be money, but they may have no love in their life or friends or, you know. So m my mom always taught me to go, well, you know, if you can pay your mortgage and you have a good friend and you can put food on your table, then you're richer than you think you are. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas um, 
other people don't feel that way. They feel like if they don't have a fat bank account, then they, they haven't achieved a lot in life, you know. I, I think I'd rather, I, I'm not saying I wouldn't want to win a lot. I'm not saying I wouldn't want to be rich, but I feel very blessed and very rich, you know, for being um, able to live my life the way I want to live it, you know, and not have to ask permission from anybody for the things that I want to do, you know, which is what makes it good with my friendship with Vivi because, because of, each other's challenge. We don't have to put up with anybody. And you know that life, you know how life is. You, know, you got to put up with crap. We don't have to do that. You know, we do it our way, period. And if it doesn't work our way, it doesn't get done. You know, and if we don't, if we want things to move faster, they will. You know, we keep the school small because that's how we like it. You know, it could be bigger, but we don't want it. And we are very picky about who comes in. It's our choice. You know, um, and it's the same thing about who I cook for. I cook for who I want to cook for. You know, I don't feel obligated. You know, it has to be something that I feel, and it's like the music. We don't sing anything that we don't want to sing. We don't do anything we don't want to do. So, you know, you, th those are the riches my mother taught me, and Vivi's mother taught her. You know, it's, uh, if it's your way, you, you're rich beyond belief. You just have to have sense enough to know that. And sometimes you got to be our age to get it, but, you know. I just um, have a happy life. I don't have anything that I feel like I'm missing. You know, I mean, I did the marriage thing. It didn't work. Okay. You know, I still have my children, you know, my kids, you know. And so I, I did that, you know. Now I'm doing this my way, you know, and there's no pressure. There's no, there's no luggage involved with it, you know. I'm just doing it my way, you know. She's doing it her way, you know. We, we have our boys around, you know, and when and when they're not around, we do what we do. We just, you know, when I go to bed at night, I'm smiling. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a happy life. It's a happy existence. But only because we learned a long time ago, don't take on anybody else's garbage. That's not to say don't help. Right, right. That's just don't take somebody else's garbage because you got enough of your own. You know, so it takes... 24 hours a day to take care of yourself. So when you, you meet people in life that are busybodies, you know they're not happy people mm -hmm. because they're spending too much time worrying about something. What, who cares? Mm -hmm. you know, take care of yourself. And then, you know, you would seem to me you would be a, a lot more happier than worrying about what if Mabel put on purple shoes or not. I mean, it's just some, some of the stuff I hear, I can't believe it waste of time. Mm -hmm. You waste that's brain power that you are. Yeah. You know. So we just um we just do it our way. We don't worry about things that we can't change. You know? And if we can help, we do. You know, if somebody calls and say, Okay, we have something going on, do you guys mind doing the benefit or do you mind helping cook with this or that? That's something different than you always give back. You know, and the business thinking wise, you get something out of it usually. You know, but mostly don't get so, what is it, high on the hog that you forget where you came from, which my mom always says, well, don't be such a smarty pants. <laughs> you know, am I being a smarty pants? Well, it sounds to me like you are. Well, okay, 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 well, let me take that back, let me take that back. And I mean, I, she will, she'll say it quick, you know, are you being a smarty pants? Mother. I'm 51. I don't care how old are you. Are you being a smarty pants? You know, and, and then you know, okay, geez, I can call the smarty pants. I'm 51 years old. You know, but that's the, that's the good part because she, you know, I still have that relationship with her where I can listen to what she has to tell me. You know, so, yeah. so, um, you guys have lived in this neighborhood and you were in Mount Baker before? Okay. <laughs> that works. If she's, that's what she said. I, Vivi, we were in Mount Baker? Yeah. Okay. We were in Mount Baker. All right. So you've been in this neighborhood for a while. Oh, a long time. We yeah. lived in that house down the street first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the stucco that was down there. Mm -hmm. And um, we've been on this corner for forever. Yeah. Yeah. We bought this house. I can't remember. Yeah. When we bought this house. Yeah. 
89? Yeah, something like that. 88, 89, something like that. Yeah. Um, so what have you noticed the, about the new hair changing since you moved here? Oh, no, he needs to great. Since the old people are dying. Because in that corner were nice old people. Israel and them were right across the street. Mm -hmm. They're both gone now. They are? Yeah. They are. The grandson is living there now. Wow, yeah. Wow. They've been in um, Irene is gone. That they and you know, the Johnsons are right behind us. Mm -hmm. They're really I mean, she's not doing very well, mm -hmm. you know, so you just the old people leave. That's mm -hmm. what we know this morning else. Um, mostly that we had such good relationships with all of them. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you something, if old people like you, you know you're on the right track. <laughs> because they'll tell you, you know, and they always told us um, that the kids were lucky they got to come here because they could tell that we love children mm -hmm. and that the kids were happy, you know, and um, the most exciting part for the oldies were was um, when the weather got better and the kids could be outside and we could take the walks and just sing the songs on the corner. And, oh, it's so nice. Yeah, it is, it's a wonderful thing. But that's mostly the oldies who leave the world leaving. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, they make you appreciate every day, I think, because you never know what life is going to bring. You know, we were really, really close to Israel. Like, well, all of them actually, but really close to Israel. When he passed away, I knew that she was not going to last, mm -hmm. and it was a year, mm -hmm. almost till the day. You know, so you know, just learn to count every day because you never know. You know, but that's what I know mostly about the neighborhood is all the people with the wisdom are leaving, and they're and they're leaving it with us to pass on. You know, and then you look at uh, the little guys that were born around us and we're we're getting old and they're the young kids and it's going yeah, exactly you know so it's it's the circle is just, you know i always tell vivian oh am i as old as i am girl yeah but don't tell me you don't you know, look like you're so old as rice girl that's why i tell my mom all the time she said oh no i'm 16 mother <laughs> If I'm 51 and you're 16, there's something wrong with this picture. But I swear, since I've been a little girl, she's been 16. She says that all the time. So. It is. She's still 16. She just turned 74. But she's 16. So, yeah. So, um, let's see. Do you feel like, um, do you feel like, uh, well, there's two, there's two issues I want to ask you about. One is about, Kind of women's roles in the family, mm -hmm. and kind of how you feel like your life um, is different from your mom's life in that regard. My mother let my father rule. Mm -hmm. uh, because my mother did let my father rule, I turned out totally different. Because that's something I won't do. Mm -hmm. Which was one of the things that uh, I'm sure broke my marriage up. I was not going to have him tell me how to breathe and when to breathe. Whereas the way my mother grew up with her mother, the man was the ruler of the house and what he said went. No. I, you know, my sisters, um, I think, put up with some of the same things that my mother did that I would not. So I'm the rebel. You know, I mean, um, I think that males have a function just like we do. Fortunately for me, if I need one, I can get one. <laughs> I don't know how much nicer to say that, but I don't need you in my home 24 hours a day. I mean, if, if I was going to, you know, fall in love and get married, that's a different thing, but it still would not be, you're going to tell me how to live my life. I'm going to live my life my way. And, um. Uh, I think that came from my dad, you know, being in the service and treating all of us like we were, you know, you flip a, a coin on the mattress and make sure it's military. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, you know, that was the way he was, and I don't think he knew any other way to be, you know, but um, it, it made me not want 
that. And I, I did never I never did good taking orders. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I never. You know, so you know, when my ex husband started giving orders, well he met up was a lot of reason. <laughs> okay, so this is not gonna work. So let's split friends. Yeah. Let's yeah. leave each other alone mm-hmm. because we have children. Yeah. And I'm not gonna be you know, where now he's married to someone who he can, you know, well, if that works for you, that's fine, but you're not going to be right? Yeah, so I think that that's, you know, I believe that uh, you have a right to be who you are, and if you're with someone who doesn't understand that, then you've made the wrong choice. So that that's why it's been good for both of us because we both kind of come from that Vivian to that same background yeah, where we just she, know she yeah. I'm not going there yeah. and I'm not going to let you put me there and I'm not going to let you you make me feel bad because I can do more than one thing yeah. and you feel threatened by that well you don't need to be with me. Right. you know because this is my life too I'm not saying to you don't thrive for the things to strive for the things that you can do you know, I'm I'm so right on to you. If you want to run a company and you do it well, you go do that. But then don't turn around and tell me that I have to be in a certain category to suit you. Well, I can't do it. So. Um, and the, the other issue that I wanted to ask you about is, I mean, it seems like since the time that you were a little kid, um, there's been a huge change in race relations and role. I don't think I ever got involved with it because um, there's white in my family and so I think I was always teased because I didn't look I guess as black as some I had green eyes my skin was yellow. My hair was at one time very blonde, um, and so uh, it was mostly. Uh, I think I got treated more like I wasn't black. I was mixed, per se. You know, um, my mother's father, was very very bright. My brother was probably the same color as you, although he was black. Um, and he had green eyes like me. My other sisters had brown eyes, you know, but the, the green eyes came from my dad's side of the family. And his father was um, adopted but was born in Germany. And so he was half and half, you know. And so, uh, yes, Mama. But, uh huh. Um, And so um, I always got treated because I looked different. There was always a lot of prejudice. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the whites really didn't know how to treat me because I didn't look black to them, whatever black is supposed to look like. And the blacks treated me different because I didn't look black to them, whatever that's supposed to look like. You know, so... um, I think I've always went your own way. Yeah, I was always a rebel because I was there was always something, you know, and I didn't care about being accepted. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I think I've I've always been a very strong-willed, independent person. I just did not care, but it could have been because of that. It could have been because um, <clears throat> I never felt like yeah. I, I don't think I was accepted on either side, you know. And you get to a point after a while, you don't care. <laughs> so you just do your own thing. So um can you tell me a little bit more about food? <laughs> what? You know, do you, do you consider yourself to be in kind of an African American cooking tradition? Or no, like I consider myself anything that somebody likes. Mm. Um, I never put stay in one place because that's boring. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, if you're Italian, I want to know about that. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I will go uh, and sit in anybody's kitchen, which is where the elderly people come in mm-hmm. because they have no problem teaching you. 
yeah. at all, you know. Um, and so, to me, if it's if people are eating it, you're you're stupid if you don't want to know how to cook it, or, and you keep yourself in one place. That's not me. I want to know. I mean, if I go to a restaurant, I I may not necessarily eat their food because I can't see them cook it. <laughs> well, you always see my head wrapped. I don't know if you ever noticed that. And that's because I'm in the kitchen. And if you find a hair in your food, then you might as well call yourself out of business. So I keep my head wrapped. But in restaurants, they don't do that anymore. Yeah, true. You know, and so you don't. If I'm not watching them wash their hands, or they, you know, have their hair wrapped, you know, and, and a lot of times they have a lot of young people that work in restaurants. And if I don't see what's going on, I'm not eating. Well, it makes sense, right? And the people don't have the same values. Um, but I will go in. They they know who I am, so I can, I can go in the kitchen. And watch somebody do a, a, a recipe or whatever, and learn that way, you know. Or m most of the time, I usually um, give myself a sweet little senior citizen who still fix the the, the back home mm -hmm. recipe, and I, I learned that. Hmm. Um. Um, Ida, across the street, taught me how to make the, uh, I can't think how we call it, but it's a, the pasta, homemade pasta that you stuff. I can't think of the name of it. Like the calzones? Yeah. Or smaller? Yeah. It's like ravioli. It could be ravioli. She taught me so many. Where is she from? She's a Jew. But, um. Uh, she taught me how to make the, the, the like uh, Eastern European kind of dumplings. Or? Yeah, yeah. She taught me how to uh, to do that, you know. And um, um, Sherry over there is Asian, mm -hmm. and she taught me. Um, it was a shrimp. I don't know if I know it's names. I don't know recipes. I know, but it was a shrimp something something that was uh, authentic uh -huh. uh, that she learned when she was a little girl. Uh -huh. That her kids, I'm so sick of that. But to me, it was like Christmas uh -huh. because she, you know, she taught me the, the seasonings and stuff that I wouldn't have known uh -huh. to go and buy to fix this particular dish. You know, it's it's way different when you look in a cookbook and you go and buy the stuff and then you do what the, the cookbook says. Because I'm not a cookbook person. Mm -hmm. But when you go and you sit in someone's kitchen and you go through it with them, it's it's way different. You know, because, you know, it's not so much measuring spoons. That's, you know, you watch them crumble and you watch them, yeah. Um, I've been finding that out from people. It's yeah. like people, all the best cooks, they, they no. write down No, you know, I mean, it's, it's all, all in, right. yeah, it's all, that's right, you know, and, and that's, Vivi swears up and down that's how she gained weight because I never taste food. She does. <laughs> hey, come here. So she, she said, no more tasting. She's, she's on this diet now. She said, I'm not tasting nothing else in here. That's great. But, uh, you know, for a long time, okay, Vivi, taste this, okay. Oh, you know, or I go to the neighbors and, well, taste this and tell me what you think, you know. But um, mostly uh, I, I just talk to the people and I learn that way. You know, and go in the, in their kitchens, and they take the time. And if I don't get it the first time, they always say, that's okay. Next time I'm I'm going to cook it, I'll call you again. Okay, and then I, and I, I, that's how I learn most of it. You know, but I don't like to stay with one thing. I like to learn everybody's. There's a lot of people in this world. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of different things that you can learn. I'm learning now. Um, um, Polynesian. Um, learning some good Polynesian things. You where know, is uh, teaching you that? Well, there's a girl that works at uh, QFC. Uh -huh. uh, her mother uh -huh. is teaching me. So they're, they're from Samoa? Or uh huh. Okay. And uh, I did, uh, I roasted them, a pig for them. Oh, great. Um, and uh, she said, for a black girl, that pig was real good. <laughs> so it was, it was a standing joke between us for a long, long time. 
and I asked her after that, I said, well, since the, the pig was good, will you teach me some things? And she started laughing. She said, yeah, she would, because she speaks broken English, you know, real broken English. But uh, um, now I'm learning that, you know, and it's very exciting because it's so different. Every different race is so, you know, when you learn it, it's like, what in the world? I would have never thought to put that in. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you never know, you know. And I mean, I've I've gotten to the point where they have things in their garden that they just go yeah, pick yeah, yeah. raw, you know. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm learning. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so then I then I I come back and I call my mom. I said, "Mother, guess what?" And she said, "What?" Well, I said, "Mother." She picked a root out of the ground and washed it and then cut it up and. And mother would start laughing. She said, "Really?" I said, "Yeah." She said, "Well, you know, your grandmother used to do that." When they're gone on the weekends, we got party <laughs> chairs behind them. Uh, I'm sure you do. <laughs> and we put them on the back porch and go, oh, a real bathroom. <laughs> so, um, so you were saying Sherry has something that her kids got sick of. Did you have stuff that your kids like stuff that you? Like, no, or, my kids like to eat. They like to eat anything. Yeah, I mean they don't care. I mean I got um, um my baby boy's birthday is coming up in May, May 6th, and mm -hmm. you know every year I send him food. Mm -hmm. You know, because he's in Wisconsin. Uh -huh. And uh, he just says, Mom, my mouth is watering. <laughs> and, you know, I already know it's going to be good. And I said, Danny, don't make the list so long. He's like, well, Mom, you're the only one who can do it. You know, so I have to send him this stuff for his birthday. And he does not share. He is so, so what, terrible. What Barbecue ribs, uh -huh. potato salad. Yeah, barbecue ribs and potato salad, homemade bread. Um, he wants ham. He wants fried chicken. He wants green collard greens with it on um, ham hocks. How do you send it? Overnight. I know. Cost a fortune. <laughs> Cost a fortune, you know. And then he calls me when he gets it, and then he calls me as soon as he takes his first bite. And I put it in a plastic container so he can put some in the freezer. If he, he makes it, because usually he ODs. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Um, so does the song has several Mm-hmm. And he's like a to be the boy is so skinny, but the boy can eat like there's no tomorrow. You know. But yeah, he, that's what he wants. And of course his cakes. Mm. He's gotta have mommy's homemade cakes. Mm. So, um when you were bringing up your boy with turtle palsy, was there a lot of support for that? that no. Uh uh, Vivi. Vivi yeah. My mother and them, I think, were more afraid. Mm. And so um, Vivian was one because I didn't accept it for, he was over a year before I would admit something was wrong with him. But I don't think I would have if she hadn't come around and asked me that question. And I was mad for like a month. I wouldn't talk to her. And then, you know, I went back to the doctor and he said, well, you know he's got cerebral palsy. Well, no, you didn't tell me that. You know, so... Um, but she was the only one in, um, well, she's my family to me, but she was the only one that would come and get him. And she didn't treat him like glass like I did. She mm -hmm. let him get dirty and go down the slides and do all those things. So he probably wouldn't uh, be as independent if it hadn't been for her. Yeah, yeah so I, I probably wouldn't have, um, he probably would have been in the glass if if she hadn't have been him. And I would she would say, You stay home, you, you can't go. You stay home and we're gonna yeah, I'm taking the boys and we're gonna go play and he would come back so dirty. I would be so mad at her, you know. She said, It's dirt. He can take a bath, you know. But he would have had so much fun and it could be sitting on the side of the ground with a spoon, digging in the yard and whatever. They, they they always wanted to go to Auntie Vivi's. They always they never you know they never wanted to leave Auntie Vivi's because they knew that Auntie Vivi was gonna let them just 
you know, where...